Chapter 5 deals with a application known as linear programming, which you may or may not have seen before, but it's a really interesting application of some relatively simple tools that you've probably seen in your algebra classes before that is used to optimize some limited set of resources. So there's a famous example that this all started uh, around World War II during the Berlin airlift shortly after the war there was a problem of moving resources with limited planes and uh, different kinds of resources that they could uh, bring to bear on this problem but they wanted to move food and other supplies into Berlin and so some mathematicians found ways to optimize this and one of the tools they used was this idea of linear programming so it's a relatively recent application uh, that hasn't been around for quite as long as a lot of other things we, we talk about but again the the tools you need for this are relatively simple so the first few sections of this chapter are likely things that you've seen somewhere else before and hopefully most of this will be some review uh, so it'll make your life easy as we're going through these first few sections to do linear programming to do the problems we basically need to be able to draw graphs that include straight lines and some inequalities on the lines meaning some parts of them will be shaded in and others won't be and we'll talk about that later in other sections of this chapter but to begin we want to make sure we can draw straight lines linear functions and we understand how their graphs are created and how they're interpreted and make sure we can visualize those as long as we can do that we can move forward and do the other pieces so we start this section just with a quick review of plotting points on a grid and so we've got this familiar XY grid which is really just two number lines that are set up perpendicular to each other and they define this grid of points and so we can tell where we are anywhere on this grid by telling the coordinates of that point so for instance this point over here where the mouse is would be like 5, 4, because it's 5 steps to the right and 4 steps up. <clears throat> if it helps, you can think of this as a grid of like city streets, and you're telling someone's address based on which streets cross at that intersection. So there's some examples with plotting points and just getting comfortable with the coordinate grid. And again, this may be familiar to the point that uh, you can skim through this relatively quickly, but if not, you can stop and review this and make sure that you're comfortable plotting points because then if we want to graph lines we'll have to start with being able to graph points and then building up to a line from there so we start with this little description of how to graph a line by thinking about a series of points that lie on that line points that satisfy this equation <clears throat> where if you plug in an x value of 0 and a y value of 1 that fits into the equation so it's one of the points on the line and you can find a bunch of other points on the line just by picking different values of x and finding the y values that go with each one and as you do you'll notice that these points are set up along a straight line and that's true if the equation is of a linear form this general form here is a description of a linear function and as long as it's linear the points will lie on a straight line like this and so what we recognize pretty quickly is that all we need is two of these points and that's enough to draw the whole line but this example has four points and then you can imagine drawing more of them to see that whole line emerge but pretty quickly we get this conclusion that two points describe a line and so we basically just need a way to come up with two points on a line as easily as possible one easy way to do it is if it's set up in this so-called slope intercept form we can very quickly read off the slope and the intercept and if we can interpret what those things are it gives us an easy way to graph the line specifically we can start by plotting the intercept that's one point and then the slope tells us how to find a second point and then we can graph the whole line very quickly and easily so that's what this description here goes through is picking out what the slope is what the y-intercept is and how to read them and then how to use them to graph a line like this example has here so here the intercept is 4 so we start at 
a y-intercept of 4, meaning the point 0, 4, and then a slope of negative 2 means we go 1 to the right and 2 down. And that gives us our second point, and connecting those gives us the whole line all together. There's also a quick note on how to use a calculator to graph lines. That can be helpful. There are other tools we'll use. We'll use Desmos, for instance, to graph lines, which makes things uh, easier. But your graphing calculator can do this as well. There's another option. Instead of using the slope and intercept, we can also use the two intercepts, meaning the y-intercept and the x-intercept, because again, we're just looking for two points that are on the line. And these two are often easy to find. Specifically, when we do linear programming problems at the end of this chapter, this method will often be the most convenient and the easiest one to use because of the way the problems are set up. It'll make this kind of the quickest way to graph a line using the intercepts. So we can find the two intercepts and graph them. And the way to find them is just that the y-intercept happens when x is 0, and the x-intercept happens when y is 0 which is part of what makes this simple because if you have an equation like this, letting x equal 0 erases that x and you can solve for y very quickly. And on the other hand, letting y equal 0 erases that piece and you can solve for x very quickly. And so once you get those two points, you can plot them and connect the, lo connect the dots to get the whole line that uh, describes that equation. So there's another example of that same process again. And then the section finishes with a quick description of horizontal and vertical lines, which are also going to be important at the end of this chapter when we talk about linear programming. Uh, we'll need to be able to draw horizontal and vertical lines. And it's just a matter of recognizing that a horizontal line looks like y equals some number, and a vertical line looks like x equals some number. And so there's an example of that very quickly, and that's summarized here. So that's really all that's in this section is just a quick review of graphing lines and hopefully that review is helpful to you as we move forward into the rest of the chapter. We're going to need to make sure we can graph points and graph lines including horizontal and vertical ones.